My inspiration for Medea is completely the fans. I mean, my mother and my aunt, the characters based on, I've said that a million times, but as long as the fans want to see it, I'll keep doing it. And she'll be around for another movie at least. If they ever stop coming, though, she's going to die a quick death. That old broad is going straight to hell. We started the first show, and nobody could have imagined that this first show would be so successful because Medea wasn't the star of the first show. It wasn't supposed to be. And it just worked out to where Medea had to because the first show he was in the back. Uh, okay, the star didn't show up, so you go here, you go left, you make this. And, and the audience just loved it. And the Tyler Perry brand was born from there. It's, the, you know, I can do bad. Medea's uh, class reunion, family reunion. And it just started to grow from there. Casting is very important to me because I, I really want to work with good people. And Keech and I pull him who I have playing a prostitute in this thing, and people are like, she's playing a prostitute, she's Rudy from the Cosby Show. But no, what's, what's great about it is she's a 30-year-old woman who's an actor, and she needed an opportunity to show people that she can act. I hope she doesn't mind me saying she's 30. But anyway, she needed an opportunity to show people that she can do anything. So this was her moment, and she was fantastic at it. And, and Derek Luke, who I've wanted to work with since I, I saw Antoine Fisher, was fantastic. Candy really just represents a girl who has had a very tumultuous life and childhood and has to, had to make choices. And it's really very much about choices because, you know, we all have, you know, horrible things that happen in life, you know, that aren't ideal, that we wish maybe could have been different. But at the end of the day, it's on you and how you deal with those things. And I think Candy in the beginning, of course, doesn't deal with them well. She makes herself the victim. She tries to um, find peace with drugs and, and being very, um, what's the word, just harming her own body. But in the end, she realizes that, you know, it's really up to her. She can be that changing agent to make her life better. So I think it's, you know, a very universal story, minus the prostitution and the heroin and what have you. I think everyone has their vices and everyone, you know, has their situations. And it's about redemption and coming back from what seems to be impossible. I really fought for this role. You know, Tyler, actually, I had been working with him on The House of Pain, and he gave me a call um, saying that he was writing this new movie, and he had me in mind for this part. And he actually had me in mind for Derek Luke's Beyonce part. And when I asked, you know, about what the movie was about and the other roles, and I heard Candy, I'm like, Tyler, that's it. I said, I have to play Candy. I know it's a departure from anything I've ever done. I said, but I am ready for this challenge. I know I can nail it. And he said, you know, if you believe in you, I believe in you. And he gave me the opportunity to prove, you know, myself as an actress. And I'm very thankful for it. I mean, it was a pleasure working with both De Derek and Viola. They are such tremendous talents, and you can just feel their energy and their power, and they made my job so much easier because of how talented and how wonderful they are on and off screen. I play a character by the name of Josh Hardaway, and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a young, uh, aspiring district attorney, and he is... Uh, I believe he's the, the heartbeat of the film because he's one of the few men. Uh, he's a, one of the few men that's connected to a lot of women through relationship. And uh, it's the actions of, uh, of Josh that kind of releases, you know, uh, forgiveness, unforgiveness, and just dealing with your fears and your past. Tyler Perry came on my radar because I heard a group of, peer, group of people just laughing, smiling, saying, have you gone to see this play? Have you seen this this this, this play? And I had never heard of uh, Tyler Perry um, before or Medea. I didn't know what a Medea was. And uh, basically, uh, this phenomenon, you know, uh, developed interest in my heart. And from there, I became a fan. And I met Tyler Perry, uh, and we spoke, and we both said, you know, I think it's destined that we work together. And so a few months to a year later, here I am. My character um, is Titi. She is Maria's cellmate. She is the one that gives her the welcome when she arrives uh, to the jail. She is a serial killer. She has killed 18 men. And the character is a lot of fun to play. And also, I wanted the character to be different from what you expect a, a serial, serial killer to be all tough and and like fearless, you know, I made the character like 
like a little crazy, like a little dumb, like a little retarded, like a little sweet. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I think that he is so successful because his demographic and the people who he reaches is so vast. You know, he has audience from 2 to 92. You can bring the whole family to see his movies. And, you know, most people, whether they want to admit it or not, have a character or two in their family, it's a little crazy like Madea or, you know, and I think it's just refreshing. You can go, you can sit, you can take the family, you can laugh. It's a departure from the trials and tribulations of life, and you can get a message in also. So he's been very true um, to his form, and he's kind of serving a demographic which before had, not, had been very much untapped. And he's just gotten it down. I think what the appeal to him is it, it just brings a lot of hope and the laughter, of course. When you come to a Tyler Perry, whether it be a play, uh, you know, the movie, or one of the television shows, you, what, however long that time period is for that show, you just forget about everything else and you're caught up into, you know, the comedy, the comedy, the drama, the, the story, you know, the, the, the story that's been told, the lesson from the story. You're just kind of caught in all of that. I think the main message is redemption and I think the main and another main message is basically just understanding that you, it all begins and ends with you. No matter what happens to you, no matter where you are in life, you can, you make the decision where you want to be and you can change your situation at any given moment. I think it was very important because where we are in the country right now, we have to laugh. So many people are going through so much stuff and, you know, with the economy and housing and job market and it just, it's really sad and if you look at the news every day, you would get really depressed. So it's very important to me that this movie not be too heavy. I wanted to make it so funny that I was knocking it out of the park with laughter, while at the same time leaving a message of faith, because that's the thing that's going to get us through this. The only thing is faith. The movie is so exciting and so funny. It's the feel-good movie of the year. It is the <laughs> curious case of push. No, no, the movie is uh, powerful. It's very, very powerful, and I think Lee Daniels and Gabby and Monique and Mariah Carey and, and Sherry Shepard and uh, Lenny Kravitz, they all did such a fantastic job with this film. When I saw it, I had to, I had to be involved. It's not a Tyler Perry uh, film, but it is a film that I think everybody should see. So that's why Oprah and I teamed up for it, and uh, I can't wait for people to walk away with it because it's so, when you leave the theater, the movie leaves with you, and you think about Precious, and every time you see a little girl who looks like her, you think about what her story is. And that's what's so powerful about it. You set a date. Yes, I set a date. You know you're going to need the best man, right? I found the most amazing dressmaker, and she agreed to do the dress for us. We are all struggling to be our best. Can I have some me time, please? Did I ever ask you for some me time? What the hell is me time? My dear, you have an anger management problem. Fine, Cora. City of Atlanta versus Washington. Candy? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Seems that I know this defendant. We are all searching for a better life. Why you bail me out of jail? Because you're a friend. You ain't like the rest of us, Candy. If anybody can get out of here, you can. And we are all on a journey. I didn't raise no punk. You better go get that fool. <laughs> Between where we came from. What are you doing with her? I was just trying to help her out. You've helped her enough. And who we want to be. What is wrong with you? Why do you feel the need that you got to get somebody all the time? Well, when you're getting got, and somebody done got you, and you go get them, when you get them, everybody's going to get got. Yeah, but you're getting the goddess when they didn't do anything to you yeah, to get you. Yeah, but if the goddess get me, I'm going to get my Glock. Tyler Perry and Lionsgate invite you to experience the laughter. Joe, who the hell are all these people in my house? She got to go! The sacrifices. Don't you feel sorry for me? At least I get paid for what I do now. And the convictions. She's going to jail this time. I ain't going, I ain't going, I ain't going. That make us who we are. I see nobody told you I run this prison. Young man, I guess nobody told you that I'm mud dear. Mud to the damn D-E-A. This February. You're in love with her. There's nothing going on with us. Believe in forgiveness. They gave me 17 years. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to be here for you. And allow yourself. Everybody got a life. And what you do with their life is up to you. To break free.
Tyler Perry's Madea Goes to Jail. You saw me get ready to take this spot. I took it. Oh my God, look at your car. 